Hi there, welcome to the Artisan Studio. This is Laura, and I am here for another uh, personal YouTube reading. This one is for Lepidolite. Uh, thank you so much for your purchase of your, this YouTube reading with the Artisan Studio. Really appreciate it. Um, all right, yeah, it was. It, it's a pleasure to do your reading for you. I'm really excited to do it. All right, so for your animal for this reading, oh, and I even have a little piece of Lepidolite here too. See? I only have one little piece. But I'm, I'm thankful that I have it. All right, so for your animal, we have the bull. Now, I was kind of curious about the bull. I was uh, curious because I was wondering if maybe perhaps you're a Taurus. So, I don't know. That was one of the first thoughts uh, that popped in my mind is, I wonder if she's a Taurus. So, hmm. So you have to let me know if you are. <laughs> now, keywords with this one is wealth, potency, and beneficence, which means like being kind to others and an act of charity. All right, so the meaning for the bull is mediates the influence of Tyrannus, the Jupiter-like god of the Druids, whose beneficence <laughs> and expansiveness bring the opportunity for a rich and abundant life. The bull is a symbol of wealth and it is a auspicious and it is auspicious to draw this card when considering financial matters. But remember that the ancient ones understood that true wealth is found in the heart and soul first, though, and only then in the material world. The bull represents fertility, potency, abundance, and prosperity, things that can sometimes take a while to achieve. If your goals require you to work steadfastly in trying circumstances for, your, for a considerable period of time, the bull will help you to succeed without becoming drained or depressed. So that is the animal energy that is working with you right now. And I think it really has to do as well with everything that you have here. Because it was really like kind of name, naming a lot of different um, things that are kind of going on. And, and you definitely have a lot of different things going on as well that you're kind of um, wanting to look into. So I think this is very relevant. This animal is very relevant for you and its meaning. Um, and basically I think it really is working with you for... Um, that you know that longer period of time to help you succeed um, because it's going to be a little more of a process um, so it's going to be working with you so it doesn't you don't feel so drained now for um, your intuitive reading here uh, I started I kind of broke down some of your different questions or areas you wanted to look into and thought I would just kind of ask um, pertaining for each of those things so we start with career and what kind of um, messages that your guides and angels wanted to let you know about that um, in the area of career. Now, this was really cool because I saw this older gentleman and he was like kind of like this craftsman and he came out of a workshop kind of area and into a storefront and he was holding a broomstick and it totally made me just think of... Um, like uh, Nimbus 2000 from Harry Potter, <laughs> I thought it was awesome. So, so I was kind of thinking, you know, like having to do with uh, witch, like Wicca, um, craftsman, being crafty. So perhaps um, doing something in that area with your career in terms of spirituality. Um, Okay, what else was on here? Crafts making with different patterns. Oh yes, I was seeing some different patterns and fabrics, almost like weaving, um, or it could have been like material, like doing some kind of creative um, sewing, something like that, like very crafty kind of stuff, workmanship. So perhaps you're, you're an artistic type like myself, and um, you kind of incorporate with your artistic flair um, some of the things like with your your spiritual practice and actually make a go of it in a independent business. Uh, in terms of spirituality, under that, um, right away I uh, instantly thought as soon as I said it, um, asking about spirituality for you. Um, I instantly thought of like one of those quotes of like that spirit is all around you um, and you know like even the you know rocks under your feet everywhere around you that kind of um, uh, idea that that even if you're not able to take that time as much as you're used to 
you know, everything that we do is a spiritual practice. And it, and I think Buddhism is a bit based on that uh, end of things as well, is that, like, everything that you're doing in your life, you can incorporate that as a spiritual practice, um, yeah, throughout life, basically. I think Eckhart Tolle talks about that a little bit as well. Um, I also saw in spirituality, I saw some herbs. It was kind of a close-up of some broken down herbs or, um, some kind of particle that was kind of broken down that you could kind of burn, um, like an incense or it was like some kind of dried goods. So definitely incorporating those herbs and, um, incense in, into spirituality, which I know you, you do, but, um, you know, I'm sure you do anyways, um, just because I think both of us kind of know a little bit of, <laughs> about each other. Um, yeah, so that was kind of part of it. Um, then all of a sudden this huge rush of anxiety kind of hit. Um, and I had like this huge full body kind of aching in my arms, you know, the chest. Um, yeah, feeling anxiety, feeling a little panic, and I knew it was didn't have to do with me because I was very calm and in a meditative state. So it, when I get those kind of feelings, I I um, like to think that <laughs> anyways that maybe perhaps that was coming from your end. Um, I know I've had other instances where I'll get like a toothache or something crazy, and uh, yeah, it'll be from the other person. Uh, they then showed me Palo Santo, uh, which I use, and I'm not sure if you've ever tried using, but it is, smells amazing. It's super great for cleaning and clearing and calming um, an atmosphere. So if you're feeling that anxiety, to maybe try Palo Santo and uh, burning that a little bit. For motherhood, I saw dragon scales, which I thought was so cool. Um, so I, I kind of thought of like dragons, you know, being very protective, um, having this inner deep uh, spiritual wisdom and con being connected that way. Um, so again, you know, motherhood, um, you're protecting and you're incorporating your spirituality in with your motherhood. So lots of walks. I saw um, walking with a stroller kind of outside, you know, kind of just getting out. That's very important, um, kind of getting out with Mother Nature. Um, even if you guys are just going uh, for a walk in the park, you know, that's still very spiritual and you can, you know, just take, go and sit down on a park bench, take your, your feet or uh, sandals off or whatever and stick your feet on the grass, you know, or sand and just kind of get grounded and um, feel the earth under your feet. Um, I then saw a climbing a hill or, or a huge hill before you kind of thing. Um, so with this, it really made me think of, you know, that, that saying, I think I can, and, you know, having that patience, that perseverance, again, bringing in that bull energy to help you with that. Um, and an inner knowing that you're going to make it and you're going to make things happen for you that you want to see happen. Leaning on others as well um, is really great um, for perseverance as well. Um, I saw, um, it was like I was being led through um, kind of a park, uh, like a, a circus park, I guess. But the, the Ferris wheel wasn't a Ferris wheel. It was actually a big, huge ring. So I was like, oh, okay. So I'm not sure if you're married or um, if you're with your partner. Um but, you know, leaning on each other to help each other be able to succeed in what you want to be able to do and what he wants or she wants to do, you know, and, and being able to um, make each other's goals happen while you have baby or, or I guess, a toddler. <laughs> Now, for my experience with um, incorporating spirituality in with um, with my children, it, it definitely has been, um, you know, tricky for me as well. But basically, like, what I do is as soon as they're occupied, so if they're playing really good together or they're happy playing with their toys, um, I have two, so they kind of help each other that way. But, you know, as soon as they're occupied, even, you know, 
about once a day they have a chance of watching a little show. So then I'll go and run and that's when I do um some of my own stuff. When my when my husband is gone, you know, at work or whatever, they have like kind of their little downtime and then I have my downtime too. So that's when I'll either do my business or I'll work on spirituality. Um you know, a lot of the times my my meditation practices are now combined with meditation but as part of uh you know, more for the business. So like with these intuitive readings, but it's still good because I'm still getting that meditation in. Um, yeah, so so they're about two, about two and a half and three years old. That's when I found I could start uh, having a little extra time wiggle room there, where they're kind of busy doing their own things. So I could kind of squeak over and do something else. Um, let me see. Yeah, and if I had no time, then I would basically ask my hubby <laughs> when he got home if he wouldn't mind uh, watching them. Or, you know, so I could either do my, my meditation that I hadn't done, and I'll just say to him, you know, it'll be half an hour. <laughs> so I'll be upstairs, and, you know, you go into that separate room. That was very important, um, basically going into that different room closing the door, that kind of thing, and just kind of, you're in your own separate space now to be able to do it. So that's that, and I hope that's helpful for you. It's definitely possible. You just got to fit it in whenever you can, basically. All right, so stay tuned for part two.